What should you grow in your backyard urban homestead garden to avoid going to the grocery store and finding skyrocketing prices or empty shelves? What do you and your family like to eat? My goal this year is to grow enough fresh food for the table for two, plus more for preserving and to eat year round and save seeds for the future as well. This year I'm moving to primarily heirloom and open pollinated varieties of fruits and vegetables so that I can save true to type seeds for future plantings. You can't do that with hybrids. You have to buy new hybrid seeds each year and with seeds becoming much harder to find lately, it's much better to save your own. I know I'll have some seeds left over this year since I don't have the space or need to plant them all, but not all are viable after a year, such as parsnip seeds and onion seeds. So I know I'll likely need to continue buying some seeds that I'm not able to save. I also have a lot to learn this year with seed saving and know that I likely won't save seeds from everything I grow. If possible, grow your own garden organically without synthetic fertilizers and pesticides. That's up to you. I began my planting plan with a list of survival garden seeds in a seed bank kit I saw for sale and edited it for my northern climate and the food I know we'll eat and preserve. I deleted sesame, rapeseed for canola oil, kohlrabi, and okra as I'm not a fan, and edited some of the varieties of vegetables to be more compatible with my zone 5 garden, like long day onions instead of short day or day neutral, and I stuck to one variety of corn due to the spacing required between varieties for seed saving. I already had some of the recommended seeds and could buy individual packets to round out my seed collection for less money than the kit cost. I first tried to purchase the seeds I wanted from local garden shops. I then went online to round up my collection and I'll include some of the links for those in the description box below. It took a while to get the last packet of hard to find heirloom shelling beans, but it finally arrived so now I can show you what I'm growing this year. I'm going to go off my list for my planting plan and I'll talk about that in a future video and where I'm going to be planting everything. But starting off with the brassica family, here's what I'm going to be planting this year. First off is the purple top white globe turnip. American purple top rutabagas. My idea between planting these is that I don't have good luck with potatoes so I'm hoping to grow those to be able to mash them and use them similar to potatoes. Two types of cabbage, the first one being all seasons and the second being Copenhagen market. Some Brussels sprouts, Long Island improved, dwarf Siberian kale, Georgia collards, seven top turnip for the greens. You don't grow these for the root, just the greens, tender green mustard, also for the greens, pak joy, and the rest of the seeds I already had in my collection so they weren't new purchases but I'm gonna hope that they germinate well enough is Waltham 29 broccoli, snowball Y cauliflower, arugula, which I absolutely love in my salads, and while I'm not a fan of radishes at all, I'm trying to be. So I'm gonna try to grow again some cherry bell radishes. If nothing else, I can give them away, use them as barter. And also surprisingly in the brassicas family are nasturtium. And I actually love putting the flowers in salads and you can even put the greens in salads and I may try to pickle the seeds. They should be similar to capers. Next would be the allium family. I actually had all of these seeds in my collection already and I've already just yesterday sown all of my onion seeds. My garlic bulbs are in the garden from last fall and I won't plant plant shallot bulbs yet, sweet Spanish yellow jumbo onion seeds, red burgundy onions. I want my onions primarily for storage. I'm almost out from what I grew last year, so I'm growing more this year. And then I have green onions. These are white Lisbon bunching onions, and these would be for eating in salads and uh, chopping up the greens for recipes. I'm gonna try again to grow some American flag leeks in my garden, and I did sow those seeds already. Now, I realize that these onion seeds are all from last year, and onion seeds do not keep very long, so I really seeded them heavily, just knowing that a lot of them may not germinate. The next category of vegetables I'm growing would be umbellifers. I didn't realize this about this family of vegetables, but you'll see what's included in them. It's kind of a different. I wasn't expecting this, but in the umbellifer family that I'm growing would be Tall Utah 5270R Improved. I love parsnips. I had a little trouble finding the exact variety I wanted, but these hollow crown parsnips are 
heirloom. Two types of carrots, the Chantenay and Danvers. Uh, Danvers 126. Bloomsdale Long Standing Spinach. The rest of these are seeds that I already had in my collection. Swiss chard, which is also very easy to grow. Detroit Dark Red Beets. I flippin' love beets, so I'm looking forward to growing more of these. Cilantro is in the Umbellifer family, and parsley, and chives, which I already have growing in a pot in my reading garden, so I don't think I'll have to reseed these, but I do have seeds in case I need to. Mammoth dill. I love growing fennel, that's in the Umbellifer family, but fennel is not compatible with basically anything, so I just don't have a place for it. I, if I find a place for it, I will plant some. The next family of vegetables that I'm growing would be legumes, and that would include beans and peas, contender green bean, and the golden waxed improved beans. Those will be growing to eat fresh and freeze, maybe can. And then I really want to grow a lot of dried beans this year. I enjoyed the harvest that I got last year, so this year I'm going to try quite a few and I'm going to plant them as three sisters with corn and squash as well. So we'll see how that goes. The first one I have is the Good Mother Stallard shelling bean. I really hope these are focusing. I'm sorry if they aren't. Mexican Red Painted Pony. This can be fresh or dried. Henderson Lima Beans. Dwarf Taylor Horticultural Bean. I think these are basically pinto beans from what I understand. This is not a new packet. This is one that has been around in my seed collection for a while. It's the rattlesnake beans. And these are the ones that have inspired me to grow more beans for drying. They were awesome and they taste so good. It's called a cow pea, but it's actually a bean. And this is basically black eyed peas. Lastly, for the dried beans, I have Mayflower pole beans. It came in two little packets. And then I'm also going to grow some soybeans in the garden for fresh eating. Oh, and I dropped one. This would be the black turtle beans for dried beans. The two fresh varieties of peas I'm growing would be Little Marvel, which is an heirloom pea, and Sugar Snap. And then this one, Austrian winter pea, and it's a field pea. I'm going to grow these specifically to dry them for pea soup. Next is the grasses family and I'm growing two of those. Lemongrass which is already overwintering in my heated garage in a pot. I'm hoping that that survives. It still has some green on it but uh, my harvest from last year wasn't large but what I ended up doing was freezing the inner stalks for cooking. So I want to grow some more of that and then the other thing in the grass family that I'm going to grow is this mandan bride corn. It looks like it's just a decorative corn, but I am going to actually let it dry and I want to grind it into cornmeal and flour. I don't have the space to separate any other varieties of corn so that I can save the seeds, so I'm gonna have to just grow the one. So we'll see how that goes. That's kind of exciting. Next is the nightshade family. I edited this list quite a bit from the seed bank list, but I am still trying to go with mostly heirloom and open pollinated. The first tomato variety I'm gonna grow would be Homestead and then Marglobe. Lots of the San Marzano paste tomatoes. This I know is a hybrid, but it's the Super Sweet 100. This would just be for salads. The Red Cherry Large, and I had great success with this tomato last year, so I'll be growing that to train it up my, actually my oak tree. It got probably about 10 feet tall. Another two varieties that are not heirloom or open pollinated that I really enjoyed were the Ananas, Ananas Noir Tomato or Black Pineapple. Oh, you can't see, but that's from Sherwood Seeds. Those were delicious and beautiful. We loved uh, Oregon Spring tomatoes, and I have a few seeds. If I can get these to germinate, I have a few of these left. These were amazing on BLTs. For peppers, I am going to grow California Wonder bell peppers. I'm going to grow some cayenne peppers and maybe make some fermented hot sauce. And then I have these seeds left over would be jalapeno seeds. Next up is the curcubit family, and this would be cucumbers, melons, pumpkin squash. So I'm going to grow cucumber variety homemade pickles and market more. One is for slicing and salads, the other is for pickling. Honeydew melon, which I'm not super crazy about, but I've heard that if you grow it by on your own instead of buying it in the grocery store, it actually has a taste and tastes good and sweet. Two types of cantaloupe, this would be Rocky Ford 
I already had this seed packet of Hale's Best, and I'm hoping that this is the variety that I grew, I don't remember, a couple years ago that tasted so sweet, like cotton candy. It was so good. And then small sugar pumpkins, Burgess buttercup squash. These were in my stash already. Waltham butternut squash. These grow very well and they keep for a long time. And then spaghetti squash. I've had good success growing these as well. Sugar baby watermelon. My neighbor grows zucchini, so I trade my fresh, my raspberries that are already established for zucchini with him. And I'm not a fan of summer squash, the yellow summer squash, so I'm not gonna grow that. Some of the herbs that I'm gonna grow um, in the mints would be anise hyssop, which is a wild variety that I collected seeds from and is hopefully established in my landscape now. Dwarf Greek basil, and I may actually buy a regular basil at the nursery, we'll see. Greek oregano, I like the taste of this and it's pretty prolific. Sage, um, not a huge fan of sage, but I figure I should probably grow some to have it on hand. I have a little bit dried from last year, but not much. And then thyme, I absolutely love thyme. I'm gonna grow quite a bit of this in my garden tower this year. Lavender. I'm not going to seed this if, unless I have to. It's very slow to establish, but I do have a large pot that I kept on my back step overwintering in my garage. I love lavender. Um, it's good for so many things, and I actually make a chocolate chunk lavender ice cream that is awesome. Lemon balm was another thing that I, I don't have seeds for, and sometimes I will buy a plant, but I have some established in my reading garden in the pot with chives and some other mints. Uh, because mints you don't want to grow within the rest of your garden because they spread by the roots so bad and they will crowd out other plants. So I have a pot. Daisy family, which surprisingly includes lettuces. I have buttercrunch lettuce that I want to grow, salad bowl red lettuce, romaine lettuce, this variety being Paris Island cause. Chamomile, I have this established in a pot that I did not overwinter in the heated garage. We will see if it comes back that I harvested a lot of chamomile flowers and dried them for teas. Tarragon, I usually end up finding a plant at the nursery, but this time I found uh, the Russian tarragon seeds, so we'll see, I do like cooking with that. And then also in the daisy family is marigolds, and you can use these in cooking, plus they are good companion plants for many other plants. And deer deterrence, pest deterrence. Echinacea I have growing in my landscape already, although it's beautiful as an ornamental, so I'm not sure I wanna harvest the roots, so we'll see what I do with that next year. I'm gonna leave it as is this year. I want to grow rhubarb, but I have I don't have the space for it, so I'm gonna be looking for someone to trade what I grow for some rhubarb this spring. I have some Mary Washington asparagus out in my garden. Unfortunately, I think I want to move it from where I have it and put it in a different place that it can be left undisturbed for the rest of its life. So uh, those three plants are gonna get moved and I'm gonna add three more, but I will buy those as plants from the nursery. Skyscraper sunflowers. I wanna grow these for seeds for, I'll leave them some for the birds, plus I want to harvest some for us so that we can have those for eating and cooking. Found some calendula seeds. These have lots of uses, so I'm excited to grow some of these in my front landscape. Good for teas and other, other uses. I think that covers everything I'm growing. I can't see the word. Psh. Escapes me. Okra, ugh, gross. I don't like okra, I'm not gonna grow it. If you wanna see what my garden looked like last year, click on this video. Mm -hmm.